this happened. About 1500, the Sangoma on the left and the European tradesmen on the right. This was about the time the large-scale subjugation and enslavement of the peoples of Africa and the Americas started up. Sangoma is a Zulu term for healer. The white figure is an adolescent wearing a mask. I take a mask and that's not all I take. He holds a stone over his heart. Number two. This is about 1600. We whites did this. The Sangoma is being felled and is partially submerged in water. Her face is now rimmed by the contour of a table saw blade. The white figure has grown and wields a stick. Number three. This is about 1700. Uprootings, rape, beating, and terror continue as our modus operandi. The Sangoma is still on the ground but struggles to sit up. The white character's truncheon has developed roots and tendrils that wrap around his arm and hand. A flying python holds out two snakes, a non-poisonous king snake and a poisonous coral snake. A great cat observes this beating in silence. Number four, about 1800. We do this through government and wars. If you clasp a snake ball, you may drop, drop your stick in your mask. Snake balls are phenomena that occur in nature when snakes gather to mate. Here, snakes gather as a governmental snake ball, clasped to the bosom of the white man. His hand turns toward us as if in a slap, not a benediction. His mask has fallen off, revealing his face, a Janus, which displays a fractured aura. Many bullets surround the white figure, representing the sale of ammunition central to the industry of slavery. The Sangoma crouches, no longer felled. She holds a green stick or a rope which catches fire. A cat stands guardian at her feet. Number five, between 1800 and 1900, whites beat whites and also people of color. This is an ending, not yet. It's still unfinished business. A new mask, a clan hood, is donned by one of the whites. The white figures assembled on a cliff fight with fists. They choke and bruise each other. Bullets are flying, snakes crawl among their bodies. The Sangoma on a separate cliff to the left is partway to standing now, supported by a verdant stick or a gun. Her face is a bird which partially breaks out of the saw blade. The bird is a Nigerian symbol for mind. Number six, about 1900. It is futile to be a midwife to this man who is pregnant with his own death. The white man has fallen and clutches his mask. A few snakes hide around him. The Sangoma now stands, but she's working, pulling at a burning rope or umbilical cord extending from the white figure's navel. Number seven. The white man loses his equilibrium and falls. This is by his own doing. Number eight. This is about 20 hundred now. Oh no, is he still alive? This is not ending. SOS, dot, 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 dash, 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 dot, dot, dot. The Sangoma dances, although it is raining hard and she is dancing in water. Her face is comprised of lichen. She is accompanied by a small Cameroon's figure to get Together they have torn the umbilical cord apart, but its ends persist as living snakes. The figures at the top right and bottom right are the figures of angry women derived from Picasso's Les Demoiselles d'Avignon. They also speak in SOS.